Matt LaFleur, the coach of the team, talking about whether or not he needs to have two plans of approach for the 2021 season, depending upon who the quarterback is. Here's what LaFleur had to say. No, we'll have, we'll have one plan. We've kind of uh, pretty much laid that out, just going to fine-tune some things over the next few weeks and uh, just in terms of the logistics of our schedule and whatnot. But we've got what we feel is a pretty good blueprint um, in terms of how to get our guys ready to play. Obviously, it, it is a little bit different this year uh, in terms of the number of preseason games, and then you compare it to last year, so you're kind of leaning back on the 2019 season. Um, so, but, you know, we feel confident with what we, what we'll have in place with the guys and, um, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to getting them back, uh, July 27th. They wrapped their off season program yesterday. They did kind of a weird thing at the end. They did their mandatory mini camp last week. This week they had a scaled down set of OTAs. That's LaFleur meeting the media on the way out the door as we all now wait to see when, if, whether, whenever, however, Aaron Rodgers is going to be back. What's been your overall thought on this whole thing that Rodgers first brought up after they lost to the Bucs, and then two days later he tried to act like it was no big deal, and then the day of the draft, the day the draft began, it all blew up, and it stayed blown up ever since then. What's been your thought as to all of what's gone on with Rodgers since their season ended? My thought has been pretty consistent throughout. It's that Aaron Rodgers' happiness is paramount in my mind. I want him to be happy. I want him to enjoy his life. And it seems to me like Green Bay is a toxic place for him. No, but seriously, uh, it's it's so clear that it's just timelines got screwed up here, right? Like you, we all we all know exactly what happened. Aaron Rodgers had a, a not great year a couple of years ago. The last year for Mike McCarthy. The Packers said, okay, this guy is in his mid to late 30s. We, as an organization, which I'm going to give the Packers credit, this is why the Packers are consistently good, is that they are always thinking to the future. They are always saying, hey, we're not going to mortgage everything right now. We're going to try to keep this going consistently throughout. Uh, And then Aaron Rodgers played out of his mind. And Aaron Rodgers went to -to back-to-back NFC Championship games. And Aaron Rodgers won the MVP. And their timeline got screwed up because I think they were fully ready to move on from Aaron Rodgers after this coming year. And that's why they drafted Jordan Love. And that probably made Aaron Rodgers upset. And the timelines got screwed up because Aaron Rodgers outplayed their expectations for him at his point in his career. And now they're stuck with a situation which I don't really understand how it gets fixed. I, I mean, Mike, you you know a lot more about the inner workings and, and you hear a lot more. But I, I, if you had to, if you had to say, hey, you have to pick one or the other, like you have to pick, you have to make a decision. I still think Aaron Rodgers is a Packer Week One because I don't know how this gets fixed if both sides just say like we're not moving at all because I don't think Aaron Rodgers wants to retire. But it doesn't feel like a relationship that is built to last here. No, absolutely not. And I think the key was 2019, even though they went 13-3, and three, they may have seen some signs that caused them to think, okay, eventually Father Time is going to win as to him, as it will, as to every other quarterback. We need to be prepared. We need to be ready. They would say they didn't go into the 2020 draft with a plan to get a quarterback it just kind of unfolded that way they wanted Justin Jefferson didn't get him the Vikings did they wanted Brandon Ayuk they didn't get him the 49ers jumped the line to get Ayuk and then they kind of freaked out after the 49ers took Ayuk at 25 they freaked out and moved up to 26 to get Jordan Love instead of trying to get a receiver they had a team that was Super Bowl ready or close to it and this kind of threw the curveball at everyone's head as we tried to figure out what in the hell is going on. And one thing Rogers said earlier in the off season, I think it was with Kenny Maine. He's spoken a few times, but in the appearance on Maine's final sports center, the notion that Rogers performance in 2020 threw a wrench into their plans. I think Rogers believed they were going to make the switch after 2020, but he has the great season. They go back to the NFC Championship. They get so close to winning, I think they felt compelled that they had to keep him around for another year, especially when you consider Jordan Love didn't have a preseason to develop. 
He got limited reps, never dressed for a game. I think they're nervous about the prospect of going forward with Jordan Love this year. They want Aaron Rodgers for one more year, unless deep down I kind of wonder whether Mark Murphy does. I think Mark Murphy would kind of like it if he didn't show up and they get $35 million back and then they trade him next year. He doesn't go somewhere else and make them look bad this year, but they don't have to deal with him this year. I think Murphy hopes he doesn't show, but I agree with you. When it's time to show, he's going to because – What's he got? Four years left. You're going to give up 25% of your remaining career just because you don't like the guy who runs the team. You like your coaches. You like your teammates. You like the fans. You love Green Bay. You're not going to show up because there's one or two guys that you don't like. I don't buy that. But with all that said, and I agree with everything you said, Aaron Rodgers is the one guy that you could actually see that happening with because he does feel like uh, someone who takes these things personally that Says when you know when he feels he wore the I'm offended shirt earlier this week on a uh, I think it was a Zoom call with, before the match their play uh, their golf match he he clearly is that type of personality I'm not saying that's right or wrong I'm saying that that's just what you're dealing with is a guy who is has strong opinions and if he feels slighted he's gonna say it and he's gonna act the way that a slighted person acts I. The whole thing is fascinating, and obviously removing myself from the fact that I just want Aaron Rodgers out of the NFC North, so I've been uh, commenting on all his Instagram posts and basically being like, you look so happy, you should stay in Hawaii forever. (laughs) This is an interesting transition phase, though, for the NFL in general, because you saw it with Russell Wilson a little bit this offseason, where the, like, player empowerment and franchises having to adjust to their franchise quarterbacks – like, this is going to start happening a little bit more, and I, yeah, he looks incredibly happy. He, I mean, this is – he's living his best life. I love this for Aaron Rodgers, the way he's able to enjoy his offseason. But my point – my greater point is this. The uh, player, like, empowerment, you've seen it a lot in the NBA. I think it's kind of coming now to the NFL, and it's, it's fascinating to watch because the NFL – is uh, you know, is a league where there's 53 guys and and it, and it's harder to build a roster and you can't say okay this one guy gets all the preferential treatment but Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, some of these guys deserve it and I think Aaron Rodgers deep down knows like his one trump card in all of this he knows he's been there he's played these games he's been in this locker room he's been in this organization he knows how much. Aaron Rodgers, the talent, basically hides the lack of talent around the roster and makes up for all these things. And he knows what the Packers product is going to look like without him under center. And it's not pretty. Like Aaron Rodgers, you might want to say he's mercurial. He's, you know, what what is a complicated fellow? All these things. I hate him. But if you if you're gonna sit here and say he's not one of, if not the best quarterback playing right now, like you're crazy. That's what the guy does. You, You he makes everyone so much better, and he makes everyone's job so much easier that maybe sometimes you should put up with a little bit from him, and maybe sometimes you should bend a little bit and be a little more flexible and not have this hard-line stance where it's organization over everything. I don't know the right answer. I just know that if I were a GM, I would do everything to keep a guy like Aaron Rodgers happy so that we don't get to this spot. You know, I don't know if you and I have talked about this. If we have, it hasn't been recent, but I'm a firm believer that – For the true franchise quarterbacks and every team wants its starting quarterback to to essentially be a member of management among the employees. They want the quarterback to set the tone, get there early, stay there late, study film, hold teammates accountable, be the one who sends the message that comes from the coaching staff or the front office and helps get the guys on board with it. If that's how you view your quarterback, and I think that's how you need to take advantage of his position of inherent leadership, when it's time to have the management meeting, you can't slam the door in his face. You can't tell him, you you just work here. That's what the Packers have consistently done to Aaron Rodgers. That's what the Seahawks reportedly did to Russell Wilson last year when he was trying to get them to fix their offense on the fly. And when you see Tom Brady – getting everything he wants from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's driving the bus. He's in charge, and they they have no qualms about it. Bruce Arians throwing him the keys. I think that's caused these other quarterbacks to say, what the hell? What we see, And it worked. They they let Brady run the show, and it worked. Why don't we have a little more say? 
Well, it, it let's let's hold on one second with the Brady thing. Brady, that roster was really good, and it wasn't Tom Brady building that roster. It, it, it is no, no. I, but, I but do he got Rob the Gronkowski are, there, and he got yeah. Antonio Brown there, and he got everything he wanted. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I do think the Bucks are kind of needling it to the Packers a little bit with all these reports about how he's he's deciding the roster and he's helping with wide receivers. I think the list, to be totally honest, Mike, and I know there will people people who will push back on this when you're talking true true franchise quarterbacks the list right now of guys that we're saying that the management should do everything to keep happy is three it's Tom Brady it's Aaron Rodgers it's Patrick Mahomes I wouldn't even put Russell Wilson in that list Russell Wilson is a fantastic talent I don't think that Russell Wilson elevates their entire roster to a level where it's like he can fix everything with his play and Tom Brady's more on reputation Patrick Mahomes Aaron Rodgers are more on play right now where they, if you if you make a mistake in your roster building, they can fix it by being that special. And if that's the case, guess what? If you're the GM, you got to look at him, Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes, and say, he makes my job easier. He makes me look good. I want to make sure that he is happy and everything is working here because I will get more money. And again, at the end of the day, we know this, Mike. The NFL is a very selfish league when it comes to all of these front offices, organizations. Everyone's looking out for themselves. That's the part I don't understand. If you're the GM of the Packers, looking out for yourself here would be to keep Aaron Rodgers happy and keep him playing for the Green Bay Packers. On Russell Wilson, I'll agree with you to a point. I I think that he's not that guy like Mahomes, Brady, and Rodgers because they don't let him be that guy. And I think that's one of the pressure points. He wants to be Mahomes. He wants to have that same – whether or not he's able to pull it off, we don't know but he wants the offense to run through him. And there's the tension between him and Pete Carroll, who wants to play defense and run the ball. And they were letting Russ cook last year until the defense is caught up with what they had changed with their offense and they weren't able to bust through it. And Pete Carroll took the whole team back into a shell. And that's how it went down the stretch. I'll put Deshaun Watson close to that category too, though, because the Texans have a crap roster around him. And he had a hell of a year last year. And this all started with Watson, and I know it got derailed with the off-field issues, but this all started because, why? They're looking for a coach. They're looking for a GM. They ask for his input. He says, hey, interview Eric Bieniemy. They don't at first. Interview Robert Sala. They don't. And it gets back to that whole thing. You either work here or you're part of management. And too many of these teams have a you-just-work-here attitude with guys that they shouldn't. Uh, fair point on Deshaun Watson. Um, who who knows what's going to happen with the rest of this year? You know where he's. What's going to happen with the Texans? I don't even. I don't even think about the Texans. Every now and then, someone brings them up. I'm like, oh yeah, that's still a franchise. Uh, Russell Wilson. It's been so long since I've been on that, and I love Russell. I love watching Russell Wilson. But I'm I'm firmly in the camp that we as like the media don't really criticize Russell Wilson enough for some of these playoff losses and some of these later season collapses and I I don't know I just think the shine's a little off for me with Russell Wilson he's still I would take him the the happiest I was in the offseason before Justin Fields got drafted was the day and a half that Russell Wilson was a fake bear I he's a phenomenal talent I'm not saying he's not a top five top ten quarterback I'm just saying there's a distinct distinct difference in Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson in my mind I did wonder how close they came to contacting the family of Bronco Nagurski to see if they would consent to number three being unretired so that Russell Wilson could wear it. There was that period of time where it looked like they were going to do it, but why? Why? Because Wilson wants to be with Nagy because Nagy was in Kansas City for the first year of Patrick Mahomes before he played, but he was there when Mahomes was a rookie and was learning, and the idea was, the thinking is, Matt Nagy would be like Andy Reid, and say, we're going to make this all work through you. I think that was the attraction to Chicago. Why are you shaking your head? Because if if Russell Wilson's decision-making is that Matt Nagy could be like Andy Reid, I don't want him on the bench because that's not the correct decision. That's terrible. That You have to question everything he thinks if that was what he was thinking. Uh, appearing next uh, on Pardon My Take, Matt Nagy, Bears coach. Um, I'd love to have so, him on. I would be not. You I, know, I, I know me. I, I don't. Just, I wouldn't be mean, but I would say, hey, man, like, there are times when the moment is too big for you. So, I'm sure I think we're talking about him yeah. next, which I have some criticisms for him.
Well, we, we will be talking about the uh, about the Bears in the next segment, but with Rodgers, look, I I think this does end with him showing up, and I really do think that deep down, Mark Murphy would prefer that he didn't because this is the perfect transition year. Because if he doesn't show up, they can blame him. First of all, he's under contract for three more years. And I think, you know, the fans will tend to line up behind the laundry like they always do. It drives me crazy. But when the fans side with the billionaires over the millionaires, of course, in Green Bay, there's no billionaire to get behind. You really are getting behind the laundry and you're a part owner. If you've got that $200 piece of paper that you hang on the wall in your basement because you have one share of Green Bay Packers stock. So it's easier to get behind the team. And I think that's what Murphy wants. He, he doesn't show up. The fans line up behind the team. Rodgers is the bad guy like Favre was in 2008, even though they didn't want Favre there either. Jordan Love gets a year where he goes out and whatever happens, happens. And we don't have to worry about Rodgers as a Bronco or a Raider or with some other team ending up in the Super Bowl. And we get $35 million back between salary and bonuses and cap space that can be yeah. used on other positions with the team. And then by 2022, we trade him. We get three, three first-round picks for him and we move on with our new organization post Rogers. I think for everything you just laid out, it, it would work. Uh, and obviously, play, you know, fans, you're right, would get behind the laundry. I think you'd have to get the picks before this season. I think you'd want to trade him before this season. Why? And then it's a, because Why? then it is that clean move on. Like what you're saying right now makes sense. Like the, hey, it's, 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 in, the, it's in the rear view. We've moved on. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't show up and doesn't play this year and he's not traded – it, you know how that works. It's a conversation the entire season. And if Jordan Love starts poorly, it's like, well, where's Aaron Rodgers? Can we bring him back? So I think you'd want, if for, for what you just said, what you just laid out, to actually work, it needs to be a clean, he's no longer a Green Bay Packer, he is a Denver Bronco or someone else. These are the picks we have. This is what we're planning on doing going forward. We'll you know, see a week one. We'll pack the place and everyone will buy their, their stupid cheese heads. I like the idea of trading him as late as possible so that he can't show up in Denver and take them to the Super Bowl. And really, you put him in Denver with the Chiefs and Mahomes in the same division. It's going to be a little bit more difficult than it would be in another place for him to have a great season. I mean, if Brady had gone to the Chargers or the Raiders or the Broncos last year, I don't know that you guarantee he's going to make it to the Super Bowl because he's got to deal with Mahomes in his own division. But, well, but they, you know, they still... They still didn't win the division in the NFC South and got hot and won the Super Bowl, so I won't put anything past Brady. But as it relates to the timing here, here's my concern from the Packers' standpoint. If you trade him between now and week one, you're going to get less than if you wait until after the season because the 2021 draft obviously come and gone. You're going to get draft picks in 22 either way. If you trade him now, if you trade him in March. I just think if you wait till March – you're going to have 10 teams that may come to the table. Right now, where's your leverage to get the best possible deal? You got the Broncos and maybe the Raiders, although they all the stuff we're hearing about Derek Carr and John Gruden, and maybe the Raiders wouldn't be interested. Maybe they want to let it ride with Derek Carr again. So if you got one team who's trying to get the guy, you're not going to get the same deal you could get in March when we've gone through another season of football and teams have decided, yeah, our guy sucks. we got to find somebody else, and they're going to, they're going to show up for the auction for the Aaron Rodgers contract. I think the leverage still is with the Broncos is like, you know, this is your magic bullet. Like this is the, the, the John, if you called up John Elway and you're like, Hey, last few years haven't been so fun. Have they? Well, guess what? I give you, you know, we do this trade. You're back. You're back to legendary status, team building, everything like that roster is ready to go. Vic Fangio will not bother Aaron Rodgers. He will just run the defense and not bother like that team, they can compete with anyone, and that's the it is it is basically just taking that magic ball. Like that, you you agree with that though, Mike? Like if you're John Elway, I don't care about leverage. If well, someone calls you up, if if the Green Bay Packers call you up and say, "Hey, John, like it has it has not been fun. People have questioned you. Your your legacy in Denver is starting to get a little iffy here. If you still can't figure out quarterbacks, guess what can fix all of that? Aaron Rodgers. It's basically the flex seal. You're just – there's a big hole, water coming out, and you slap Aaron Rodgers on it, and everything's fixed in Denver. That's the – that's You're the leverage. Flex seal now? You're yeah, pushing you know the, flex seal now? You know, you know the I commercial. Know flex seal. When the guy – there's know, this big hey. cylinder of water, he's like, boom! 
that's Aaron Rodgers. That is. L- let me just say this, though. When the time comes to talk to the Denver Broncos, and, and it's been a while since we talked. I don't know. You've been away. Yeah, uh, John Elway don't work here no more. He don't shine shoes no more. Elway yeah, isn't in charge anymore. Yeah, okay, Mike. He you got, bought that? He got fired. Yes, he got fired he into a bigger job. Yeah, he no, promoted no, himself. Yeah, he promoted himself. He's 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 out. George Payton's the guy you got to call now, which is fine because Payton was in Minnesota all those years. He knows what Rodgers can do. Fangio was with the Bears. He knows. The one concern I have about the Broncos is this. Fangio isn't going to bother him because Fangio's the defensive guy. Pat Shermer's the offensive coordinator. Pat Shermer is so tightly wound that he's had Mike Holmgren, one of the most tightly wound and profane coaches of the past 25 years, advise him – to lighten up Francis. That's how tightly wound Pat Shermer is. Fire Pat Shermer. (laughs) And just let Aaron Rodgers handpick whoever comes in. Or just let Aaron Rodgers run the offense like Tom Brady does in in Tampa, although that's not the truth. Uh, I I can't rule out anything at this point because I'm having a hard time really reading the tea leaves here. And Aaron Rodgers likes that. I'm a firm believer This whole beautiful mystery thing is something he's concocted. It's something he feeds. It's something he wants. He is the classic pro athlete or slash celebrity that wants to be the center of attention, but wants to reserve the right to be upset when everyone pays attention to him. Do you agree Mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, absolutely. He's a uh, complicated fella, which really, I love that quote because it's essentially, he's a jerk. That's all you're saying. If you ask, if someone asked me, how's Mike Florio? I wouldn't be like, well, he's kind of complicated. Like, no, he's a good guy. You know, terrible lawyer, good guy. But I, like that, that would be what I would say. <laughs> yes. What? So, would, that's what uh, I would say. But, but here was the kicker. Here's the kicker too. And Sims caught this. Mark Murphy not only said he's a complicated fella, he said he's a complicated fella and I'll leave it at that. Right. Which, which is, which is the twist of the knife, Right. But, you know, it's like, I'm going to stop there before I really get myself into trouble bearing my soul in what I believe as to this individual. I I can't imagine saying, answering like he's a complicated fella and having that be a good thing. Ever. Yeah. Well, Uh. and he likes, he likes to be complicated. And, and that's, that's the thing. They've dealt with this guy since 2005. Now, pre far retirement. They didn't have to deal with him. Once he became the starter, they had to deal with him. And my guess is they've tolerated a lot over the years from Aaron Rodgers because he's so damn good. It's kind of like a miniature version of Antonio Brown in Pittsburgh because there's no reason to believe that Rodgers has been as over-the-top diva-ish as Brown was in Pittsburgh. But Mike Tomlin dealt with it quietly. We didn't know about it from 2010 through 2018. Then once Tomlin decided, you know what, Brown's not the guy he used to be, and I've had a decade of this. I've had a belly full of Antonio Brown. See you later. I kind of feel like there's a little bit of that going on with the Packers. Not nearly to the same extent, but just like, you know, this, this guy's been keeping us on our toes since 2008, and it'd be kind of nice to go back to having a quarterback that we don't have to tiptoe around all the time. Yeah, and it blows up the entire facade. I mean, what, football – is the one sport where they love to cling to the idea that no one's bigger than the team and that everyone gets treated the same. And, you know, Bill Belichick won all those Super Bowls because he treated Tom Brady just like the 53rd guy on the roster. Well, guess what? Time has changed a little bit. And when you have talent that is way better than everyone else at that position, you do change how you deal with them. And I'd I'd push back on the Bill Belichick thing. I bet you he doesn't treat everyone exactly the same if you read any of the stories about Lawrence Taylor when he was dominating for the Giants he had a different set of rules than everyone else on the roster and that's just the reality of pro sports so I think when it gets like when the curtain gets pulled back and it's like hey wait are the Packers really not treating Aaron Rodgers like that's that's on the Packers to me because the in in pro sports in the NFL if you have a guy who deserves to be treated differently because he's so good, you treat him differently, and you suck it up, and that's just what you do. I agree. But once the slippage begins, you can't wait to not have to treat that guy differently anymore, that there's a price to be paid for getting different treatment. 
once you start to slip, they're done. That's it. We've been yeah. dealing with this too long. We're not going to deal with it anymore. We, we, we were willing to deal with it when you were dominant. You're not dominant anymore. We're, we're going we're gonna to roll the dice with a guy that doesn't make us have a separate set of rules, that doesn't constantly create stress for the organization because we got to worry about what's Aaron going to think of this? What's Aaron going to think of that? I mean, they knew damn well what they were doing when they pulled the pin on that grenade. And he can say it's not about Jordan Love. And Jordan Love just – I feel bad for Jordan Love. Jordan Love is the only guy in all of this who has zero blame and can't and is just caught in the middle of it. Even, even Matt LaFleur, he took that job. Matt LaFleur is caught in the middle of it, but he had to know when he walked through the door, I may be stepping into a bit of a mess here in the final years of Aaron Rodgers' career and whatever tension there may be with the front office. Jordan Love got drafted into it. He had no choice whatsoever. And, you know, at some point – they need to be thinking about doing right by him. Yeah, well, I have this idea um, that they should do away with the drafts and players should get to pick their own teams. Yes, yes, I, and now you're trolling me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.